Yeah. yeah, this is our third time in the UK, but we've never done a festival or like a support tour or anything, so uh, we're excited to play. Yeah. We were looking at Paris, call them around with Beartooth. Yeah. Trying to figure out how to fit them all in. Busy men, you know. <laughs> Our, our first sold out show ever, including the States, was in, in London at Camden at Barfly. Barfly. So we never even sold out a show in America, but we came here and sold out here, which made no sense to us. Yeah. So Still so that's, a, that's day, a memorable that's, one. That, that's like the most insane thing. Because we asked that promoter, he's like, yeah, it sold out. And we were like, who were they here to see? We said that to him specifically because we were just like, why are they all here to see us? Like, no one knows who we are. So that was rad. We're both drummers, uh, we both play guitar as well. And we write everything acoustic. Yeah, it all starts off acoustic based and then kind of the song dictates what it needs. So some sometimes the song feels like it needs drums or bass. Or sometimes it feels like it needs strings, you know. Yeah. So we don't we kinda of like leave no stone unturned when we're when we're writing and recording. We'll we'll try anything. We're we're really open to trying different uh, instrumentation, different sounds on anything. I think it's easy to write like guitar riffs and stuff like that on tour. I think I, I find it hard him, to focus on tour. For yeah. I, I write best when I'm just sitting in a bedroom back home. Yeah. So it's it's for me it's tough to write on tour, but you know when we have time in between tours we go and we we put out new demos and stuff like that. I think the better live tracks for for me that I enjoy playing would be uh, History, Concrete, and No More Bad Days are the three that I enjoy playing live the most off of Cloud. Way better than we could have imagined. Yeah. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, when we made the record, we self-funded it. We thought we were going to self-release it and just put up some YouTube videos, maybe two or maybe not. Uh, and we ended up releasing it on Epitaph Records, uh, playing Warp Tour right after it came out. Uh, All the reviews were really good. The record, re yeah, reviews did really well. That's always like a scary thing. But you, you never, like Kevin, he always says, you never write the record for anyone else but yourself. Like we want to write the best record we could, and then after it, you don't think about anybody when you're writing a record. You just want to love it yourself. And then when you release it that night before, it's just like everyone's gonna hate this record. Yeah. And we're the only ones that are gonna like it. That's it's like it's like bringing process. your kid to his first day of school and being like, like shit. We like our kids so much, but is he gonna How get did this a allergy with... pop in your head? <laughs> you hate kids. Why did this the first one? They didn't even need an analogy. They understood. <laughs> Bringing your kid to preschool. Yes. Yeah. It was we crazy. were in the studio. Literally got an email that set from Brett Gerwitz's his assistant and said, "Hey, Brett's interested in the band. He wants to get on the phone with you guys." We we're said like, we were just what? like talk to our manager, and then our manager was just like, "Yeah, they're making you an offer." And yeah. this was all happened in like an hour. We we're just like, yeah. Epitaph? What? I grew up in Southern California, uh, so like Epitaph, like Southern California punk bands, like The Offspring, Pennywise, Bad Religion, The Vandals, like these were bands that were massive, you know, to our our we scene had a growing Google up. Calendar going at that point of our release. We we're gonna do some fifty dollar Facebook boosts, on yeah. some posts. Yeah. Hopefully sell a hundred copies. Yes. Oh, Seaway. Seaway's coming down to be. Are you guys in the UK right now? They're being extremely rude, by the way. <laughs> Note that on your interview, please. <laughs> Actually, we kind of have a lot, and the cool thing is, is we're sharing a bus right now with Seaway, and they. Uh, this is their first year, and so is as it is. We're on tour with them too, so we were just telling them all the things that like we learned from last year, just how to handle merch and what to do with. Your dolly situation. The dolly situation. Dolly situation's key. What do you guys call them dollies here or hand trucks? What do you call them? Trolleys. Do you guys know what you call them? Trolleys? I don't know. Like four <laughs> wheels, like you like. Oh, oh yeah, they call yeah. dollars. Yeah, yeah that, that's actually key. And just like how to bring gear on Warp Tour and exactly what to do. Yeah. Do it's, sign, it's a do, very different festival than anything else. So it's it's a really big operation, and it's like they say it's like opening and shutting down a city every day, basically, because there's you know between. You know, eight and twenty-five thousand people there every day, and it's there's all gone so many day. stages. There's like seven or eight stages, yeah. so it's pretty crazy. All the catering and all everything yeah. involved. It's it's a big operation. It takes you a while. Like the first month is really hard for us, but then you just Once started you realizing way, like yeah. how to handle things better, and then it became super simple and great. A lot of fun. Yeah. Fall tour. We do a fall tour in the states, uh, and then at the end of the year, we're gonna start making a new record. 